Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. Gonna make gnocchi. Okay, there's some ingredients lined up there for the gnocchi. Potato gnocchi. So for the potatoes, I'm doing my cold salted water in there, bring them up to the boil, simmer them until they are just about tender. You could also bake them, but leave the skins on. Okay, butternut squash to go with it. Get your squash in there, a little bit there, and one little straggler. There it is. Gonna just get that a little bit brown. I'm gonna add onions and mushrooms and garlic and some nuts to this but that is not important the important part is the gnocchi so whilst you see me browning the vegetables there gnocchi what the hell is it well it's like a dumpling it's a pasta uh, it dates way back to the roman times when it would have quite often been done with a semolina uh, more commonly now with potato but that would not date back until more like the 16th century when uh, when europeans discovered potatoes for the first time from america Basically, it was served as a first course, usually. Very, very filling, gorgeous. Sometimes people will refer to them as pillows, and I think that's the way that they look sometimes when they're just cut. All right, those vegetables are looking nice now. I'm not cooking them all the way through in the pan. I'm gonna transfer those onto a baking sheet and they're going to go in the oven just to finish off. But this video is not about the vegetables and the sauce, it is about the gnocchi, so we're not going to stress too much about that. By all means, open up a jar of Dolmio sauce, warm it up and put your, put your gnocchi in that if you really have to. Okay, so that's the vegetables going in the oven now. I tried to do a really clever split screen, spent about an hour and a half in it, and uh, couldn't work out how to do it. <laughs> so you got that funny look. Here we are. So some of the potatoes have cracked open. Uh, the recipe requires one kilo of cooked potato. So I started with about 1.3 kilos. That was the almonds I decided to use. Dry pan, just roll them around, get them nice and toasty. You can completely miss out the nuts. It's up to you. Walnuts. Pine nuts would be lovely, cashew nuts, whatever you want. Here is me rubbing the skins off the potatoes. Those have been left for at least 10 to 15 minutes to cool down. They're warm still, but they're not piping hot, okay? We've let the steam escape from them. Now that is my fancy new potato ricer that I bought on the morning of making this video. Because apparently gnocchi is so much better if you've used a ricer and rather than a masher. I'm sure it would work. So here he is. Give that a squeeze. Push the potatoes through. And there you go. Very nice potato ricer. That was only a tenner from Argos. Well done, Argos. I thought it was going to be rubbish, to be honest with you. Right, so once the potato has been riced, I've weighed it. I'm happy with the weight. It's around about a kilo. I've put one whole egg and one egg yolk in there. A good couple of pinches of sea salt and an absolute ton of black pepper. And then I'm using some strong flour. I think you could do it all purpose. And you could definitely use double zero. Now the thing with gnocchi is it's never exactly the same so many variants, you know, the potatoes, did the potatoes get a bit wet when you cooked them? Did you measure everything properly, etc., etc.? So you may have a dough that is a little bit too dry or a little bit too sticky. You want it to be tacky and you don't want to knead it for too long. You really just, a couple of minutes, you're bringing it together, 
I thought mine was a little bit sticky rather than tacky so a bit more flour I'm just going to roll that around in the flour knead it but briefly only maximum about another minute on top of that and that is done here we go now we are going to portion this so unlike a pasta or pastry you don't need to rest this that is some semolina flour it gives a lovely finish to this gnocchi you can use rice flour or you could just use plain flour it would also be fine but I think you'll see the way that how lovely it looks with the semolina I'm cutting my dough into eight wedges and you can see I can already work it with my hands this is ever so slightly warm or room temperature it's better to work with it this way rather than letting it go cold roll out your segments into a rope or a long thin log I've got another tray ready with some more semolina on it and I'm gonna line those up on there so there you can see me working through it's incredibly satisfying this job I love doing it and I can't believe I haven't done it for so long actually now it's time to cut them approximately an inch um, my research on Wikipedia said you'd normally cut them to the size of a wine cork it is after all up to you but as the great chef John from food issues to say pick a size and stick to it now here's me using again my another brand new thing I bought a gnocchi board but you don't have to use one of those you could use a fork or you don't even have to shape them at all you could just use them as they are the, the way they're cut up with a knife but I thought I bought this board and I got all excited and they looked absolutely lovely cook these in batches the water needs to be boiling if if you put it all in in one go the water won't be hot enough and they may start to sort of break up and disintegrate that boiling water is necessary you'll find that after they have boiled for a minute or so they will start floating to the surface I cook them on for another one to two minutes but if you're not sure pick one out cut it in half taste it does it taste nice if it tastes nice it's done it's ready you got to use your judgment that's you cooking so there's the second batch going in I had a tray lined with some olive oil on it and I've just taken them onto there obviously if you're making smaller amounts you could put it straight from the pan into the sauce but in this case because I was preparing a lot more in one go I've got it all to the side and then I'm on my sauce now this is my brown butter and sage which is absolutely classic with gnocchi cook it to the point where it stops spitting so much it starts to get a little bit brown then in goes the gnocchi in goes my lovely vegetables with the squash some parsley there goes the almonds that I browned oh classic absolutely gorgeous several more twists of black pepper you notice I've been quite light with the salt today because we had some heavily salted water that we've cooked them in and also we're gonna add some parmesan you can always adjust your seasoning at the end give those a roll around in there cook them for as long as you dare you want to get them a little bit toasty it'll be lovely here we go with the first lot of parmesan going in I haven't put any quantities of the parmesan it's as much as you want to put in there and that is just about there time to serve this thing up and I'm absolutely pleased with that thrilled in fact I haven't made gnocchi for several years I like to challenge myself on this channel and I hope you like it I hope you appreciate that and uh, last finishing touches a bit of parsley and of course a bit more Parmesan cheese and we have a little taste it's a little bit toasty in the outside but it's soft and fluffy in the middle it's gorgeous so thank you very much for watching Uncle Max Cookery Lessons hope you like this one don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video coming really soon bye